what's up guys and welcome to my build video for assault sword and sword Art online fatal bullet so this video is a little bit late um, I actually recorded this once previously on my twitch channel and I rewatched the video that I recorded and I just didn't like how it was presented it didn't have the information I was looking for and the order I was looking for so I went through did some more research re-recording it now um, after having tons and tons of notes of everything I wanted to make sure I explained so it makes a lot more sense as we go through it. Um, if you found this video helpful, it would be awesome if you guys were to toss a like. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more information. We will be covering more Fatal Bullet as new patches do come out. Um, at this point in time, we have currently completed all the content. Completed. We've currently completed all the content in Fatal Bullet, um, taking care of everything we want to take care of. Got our build set up mostly the way we want to. Um, there are minor bonuses we can get through, but uh, we're not going to really worry too much about that. I figured now would be a good time to go ahead and release the build video because there are people that do want to play Sword Assault and um, I will be the first to tell you as much as I love melee play in all games as much as I love Sword Assault this is by far one of the weakest builds in the game um, not weakest in terminologies of dealing damage or being survivable or being able to actually like just go through the game but uh, one of the weakest in terms of like burst damage and dealing damage to specific parts and targets. Um, in Sword Art Online Fatal Bullet, there are a lot of enemies that have high, high reaching spots where dealing damage or critical damage to those spots is nearly impossible with a sword. It's really, really difficult. Um, some situations you can do it, but it's, it's very rare that it happens. Um, you'll even find in this sword build that you will be taking a gun um, just because there are some enemies that are just flying in the air and you can't hit them. Um, there have been now to be fair there have been sword only runs of this game done where you attack with just the ufg and if that's what you want to do then by all means you're more than welcome to do it but we're looking at efficiency with the sword and being able to make a build that's going to allow us to be that sword assault and be able to just smash through enemies or or as kirito calls him a photon sword ninja um however we're not going to get too far into that um this video is going to cover just pretty much everything we're gonna cover all all of our bases we're gonna go through stats skills weapon arts gear um you'll have some gear choices gadgets overall play style and very we're gonna touch very lightly on arfa um just because your emphasis is mostly up to you um there are a couple key skills you want and there's some information you guys are going to want to know about that i have found through testing that has been pretty frustrating um mind you but uh it's really good to know but Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. So, this is my build for my Sword Assault. Now, I'm going to give you guys the base, um, what's required to make the build work, and then you can kind of work out how what you want, because not everything I have in here, like all my skill points, are absolutely necessary. Um, so, as far as stats go, I went 115 in strength. That was to be able to hold all of my gear with a very low, or with a low... Uh, what I'm looking for here in this situation, I can't remember. Um, with keeping my equipment burden very, very low, um, meaning I can still you know, pick up and move as fast as I can, as fast as possible. Part of the whole sword build is you want to be moving as quickly as you can because in Fatal Bullet, everything is shooting you. Um, so sometimes you have to outrun bullets, and that that's something you really want to be able to do, <laughs> which we'll be able to do that a little bit easier with the skill later on. We'll talk about. But 150 was just a comfortable spot for me, and also strength increases the amount of damage you do with melee weapons, so it's good to have quite a bit of strength. It's needed for some of the skills you're going to want to take with you, so it's just it's solid. Um, now, one thing that I will note, I went through the entire game, all of New Game, and all of New Game Plus, including Extreme, with an extremely low amount of VIT. You absolutely can get through the game with low VIT. You do not need to have as much VIT as I have, however, it is extremely frustrating not being able to survive as a sword assault with low vit because i went to the game with 25 vit and outside of sword barrier which is a skill we're going to talk about in a little bit you get demolished you get absolutely destroyed and it's not fun it's not fun at all so the minimum vit i would usually recommend for people is about 52 vit that's enough for a um a skill that we're going to talk about in a little bit it also gives you some defense and note or uh, to note vit per point gives you eight defense and i believe it's 20 hp actually now i want to double check since i don't remember off the top of my head i did these calculations on the side 
I'm glad I kept them. In a Google, yes. So every point of it will give you eight defense and 20 HP. So it's helpful. From there, we have int. Um, the required amount of int is actually one. You don't need to have any int. I put a couple points in because I had some left over at the end of my build and I wanted to kind of look roundabout and look nice. So we went with five int. Um, base amount of agility you're going to need is 118. Uh, 120 just to round it out, make it look nice. But 118 is the highest you'll need for all of the skills you're going to go for. Um, and dex and luck. Now, this is a point of contingency in the, uh, in the community. Oh, before I jump into that. Agility is actually your highest defense gain per point. You get 12 points of defense per point of agility. So it's pretty nice to have that. It's well that it goes uh goes in tandem with sword and kind of funny since they always make the uh, the note that agility builds in sword art are really bad and you use a lot of agility, so it's kind of funny as a sword uh, as a sword build. But anyway. And to note these are needed for all of your sword skills, that's why it's so high. So 118 is the minimum, 120 just makes it look nice. Um, so this is a point of contingency in the, uh, in the community. So dex versus luck. Dex is going to increase your critical damage and damage to weak spots, along with your bullet circle accuracy, gadget power, and weaponry. Where luck is going to increase your critical hit rates. You also get, um, defense, which for luck, it is four points of defense per point. Um, it also reduces damage from status ailments. So when you'll notice about sword is your damage comes from being able to crit not the crits themselves because your sword crits are already really really high um you'll find that like my standard damage as i'm attacking something can be about 1.7 to 2k damage and i will crit for anywhere between 9 to 10k damage if not higher sometimes 14k on regular sword strikes um just to random enemies and not even weak spots or anything like that so when we're looking at it if my crits even on a low end crit of being 10k is still substantially higher than just a regular hit so I personally value critting more often than critting harder. Um, now, through my testing, I found the 150 luck to be okay for me. I would say base about 100 luck and 100 dex, and then you kind of balance it out what works best for you. It just depends on, again, what works best for you. Just test it out. You can always reset your build really, really easily, and I'll, I guess I'll show that at the end of the video just so you guys can see it really quick, because I mean, I'm sure there's been tons and tons of videos about it, but if you guys are here and you haven't seen it, it might be really helpful for you, but... We'll keep going from there. So yeah, 100 dex, 100 luck. Um, I go 150 and 110. Again, this is just a roundabout number. Makes it really nice, looks really clean on my character sheet. And the extra luck gives me more defense, so it's helpful for me there. So that covers all the stats. Again, just to make sure, a quick note. Oh, wow, fit in my menus. Um, again, it's minimums, 150 strength, 52 vit, one intelligence, 118 agility, 100 dex and 100 luck your stats may vary you guys can copy my build if you want to use exactly what i'm using but this will give you an idea also i have an accessory that's giving me 17 strength so normally my strength is 150 which if i remove it will give me just enough gear weight to be able to hold my weapons at a fair gear weight so from there we're going to actually move into skills i'm actually going to pull them over here um and we're going to go over a couple skills of what we're going to use so it's not just going to be the skills I have here, we're actually going to go over quite a few skills overall because there's some that I do use and some that I don't and you don't have access to all of these skills at the start of the game. So you may not be that far in and there could be some skills you still could be using. So for this build I use handguns and sword gun. Um, we'll note like what sword or what weapons you can use. You can use sword only, you can use hand or uh, you can use sword gun if you have it um, or you can use sword only and sword gun. But I recommend personally going with handguns and then either sword gun or just sword only. One of those two is a really good setup. So for my skills, what I'm using is speed form. Speed form increases movement speed by 10% uh, at level 1, 15% at level 2, and 20% at level 3. This is what I mentioned beforehand when I said outrunning bullets. Um, you'll find that you can actually outstrafe the AI when they're trying to shoot at you. And if you can sprint faster than they can shoot you, it's really, really helpful if those or for those moments where sword barrier will go down, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, from there, we have Human Fortress. Let me go ahead and pop over to it so you guys can see. Human Fortress pers are, um, is an ability that allows you for a short time not to flinch when you take damage. Um, now, this says you will also take less damage because I have Human Fortress 2. So Human Fortress 1 is just persist through damage. It's no flinching. Basically, you don't get knocked back or reeled back whenever you take damage. 
Um, at level 2, it gives you a 7.5% damage reduction, and at level, at level 3, it gives you a 15% damage reduction, which is amazing. Percentage-based damage reduction is awesome. It's really, really helpful. And for someone who's playing Sword, it's really great to fill in the gaps where Sword Barrier might be down. Um, which, for anyone who plays Sword... Um, I might have mentioned Sword Hunter. I meant to say Sword uh, Sword Assault. It's from a different game I play. Sorry about that. But um, from Sword Assault, Human Fortress is just awesome to have. And it's really helpful even if you switch to your handguns and maybe take a couple bullets here and there because you don't have Sword Barrier to save you. Um, next... We have Hyper Awareness. Hyper Awareness is an ability you get after completing Kirito mode in the story. Um, right after you finish it, you automatically get it. You don't have to buy it or anything like that. You automatically avoid one attack. Bullets, blades, etc., etc. Only once, though. Now, what they don't mention in the actual tooltip is after you avoid that ability, you have a few seconds of invulnerability where you don't take any damage at all from anything. Nothing hits you, nothing like that. So you have about, I'd say, five to seven seconds. I don't have it exactly counted out. Um, of not taking any damage from anywhere at all. Um, also to note, you cannot activate hyper awareness or hyper awareness will not activate if you are in the middle of another animation, um, another active animation such as um, blocking bullets, dodge rolling, something along those lines, hyper awareness won't activate. You have to be in an animation where its animation can take over what you're doing. So like sprinting, running, or, um, or just standing and shooting. Hyper Awareness will activate in those situations. So you may notice every once in a while if you have Hyper Awareness up and then you still take a hit and it goes through Hyper Awareness, like, you know, what happened? You might have been in an animation that counted as an active animation that locked your character out of being able to use Hyper Awareness as animation, which we'll talk more about those um, when we get to Sword Barrier later on. Now, notable, I don't have it equipped, um, but another notable ability that you can use is Omni Vanitas. If you don't have Hyper Awareness, if you're kind of still early in the game, it's pretty easy to get early on. Um, I don't have it on this build just because I reset and I didn't pick up skills I didn't use anymore. Um, but Omni Vanitas, what it does is it performs a high speed dash, propels yourself forward. At level one, it has two charges. Now, keep in mind, those two charges have to be used back to back. You cannot hold on to them. Like, use it once, hold it, use it again. Um, if you don't use them back to back, you just lose a second charge and it goes on cooldown. Because the cooldown doesn't start until it goes, or until you uh, stop charging, essentially. Um, so at level 1, you have two charges. At level 2, you have three charges. And at level 3, you still have the same three charges, but it also reduces your enemy hate. Meaning this ability is mostly used to get yourself out of bad situations. If you're stuck in a bad place, you need to get out. At level 3, you can use it and hopefully get the enemy hate off of you and get on to like, your allies or something like that. Um, note that if you don't have any allies up, the enemy hate still stays on you because you're, you're, you're the only one around for them to hit. Shield Matrix. Now, this is another one that I, no I don't personally use, but... You could kind of go a bit of a, a, a sword tank style play where you pull everything to you like there's a threat, um, an ability that increases your threat. There is a um, a provoke of sorts that you could use. And Shield Matrix is really awesome if you want to play that sort of way. What Shield Matrix does is um, you essentially kind of punch the ground and you're immune to damage for the duration of the time that you're holding the ability. You're unable to move um, and it keeps going as long as you're holding it down. And that's kind of the basis of Shield Matrix level 1. You're basically just immune. It's almost like a hollowed ground that you punch the ground for. Um, if, if you're familiar with, like, you know, fantasy-based games and those sort of abilities. Um, at level 2, it actually restores a bit of your HP. So it's a bit of a heal, which is kind of nice. And at level 3, this is where it gets really cool. So level 3, it does the HP restoration, but it also causes an explosion when you let go. Now, the key is only if you hold it down long enough for it to restore that HP for you is when it'll cause the explosion afterwards. It will not work if you just tap it punch around for a second and then it'll explode so it won't do that if you're doing it that way but you have to hold it down and you will get an explosion at the end of it which does a, you know, a pretty good amount of damage so don't sleep on shield matrix it's pretty useful so next we're going to move over to sword sword has some pretty cool abilities first and foremost we have vorpal strike now i have a love-hate relationship with vorpal strike um, anyone who follows my stream will know that i'm not a fan of vorpal strike because you have to charge vorpal strike and during that time frame you are vulnerable um, to headshots to everything and that's usually when the enemy wants to headshot you the most when you're charging Vorpal Strike but if you're out of range Vorpal Strike has you moving ridiculously far um, you collide with your target for some amazing damage and at level 2 and 3 can be done midair so you can use like you can use Vorpal Strike for traveling purposes as well um, I have seen now I haven't done it of course because I don't really use Vorpal Strike that much but a good friend of mine who also plays uh, Sword Assault has hit like the visual damage cap with uh with sword um on an enemy by charging it and hitting him from behind so 
it does some pretty it does some ridiculously good damage you get a good crit it's awesome it feels good too it's really easy it's really good at closing the gap too now we'll move on to well i guess i'll note it uh we'll, we'll do it we'll do it later let's let's move on to the next ability so let's go to sharp nail sharp nail um slashes or is a slash in front of you three times in a row essentially you jump forward and you slash um like just three strikes in front of you it's one's fluid motion but it's three strikes so it's kind of cool um let me know at level two and three you can be done it can be done in air as well so it's actually really good at uh at reaching some weak spots on monsters or, uh, or robots or enemies that are kind of a little higher up in the air or enemies that are flying sometimes you can just jump into a sharp nail and catch them and do a lot of damage so that's pretty useful horizontal cross now this if there's any ability on your pallet that you cannot take off or that i would recommend that you always have it's horizontal cross horizontal square horizontal square you charge your target for a short distance then release a combo of slashes that unleashes a shockwave in an area around you hitting three times this can be done with sword or sword gun um, as long as you collide with your target, you'll start the slashes. Um, even if your target's behind, like, cover or something like that, that's one thing to note about sword skills, is there's a little bit of a gap outside of the front of your sword that even if you target, you collide with a target that's behind cover, you actually still hit them through the cover, which is kind of cool. So that works for vorpal strike, sharp nail, and especially horizontal cross. Um, so it just does good damage, it's an AoE around you, it's really, really useful, so hey, keep it on you at all times. Uh, another noted ability that it's not here, um, just because it's not, uh, so I won't say it's not useful, but it's usefulness is too low to keep it with me at all times. Star Splash. I don't have, actually I don't even have the third version of it because it's how little it gets used. So Star Splash, um, Slash in front of you, oh, I'm sorry, that's Sharp Nail, <laughs> wow, looking at my notes. Star Splash is charge an enemy and unleash a flurry of sword thrusts for a long period of time, ending in one strong stab and a slice outward. This is really useful on down targets or targets that aren't going to be moving because one, you're vulnerable while you're doing it, and two, if the target moves out of it, it's fine. Like there's nothing you can do about it. You just lose a bunch of time on uh, on Star Splash, which Star Splash is only really, really strong when you get the entire thing off. So it's great DPS if you can use the entire thing from start to finish um, and get those last two hits in as well because they hit really, really hard. But if you lose any time on it, you have to end it early or something just moves out of the way or you just miss. It's just lost damage. So it's too situational for me to keep on my pallet at all times. So I usually don't have it. Um, we're going to pop over to sword, uh, guns and sword or sword and gun, as I call it, because that's what's really important is the sword. Um, the alternative that I use to Vorpal Strike. Now, granted, you can use both this ability and Vorpal Strike on your pallet for sword and gun if you really want to. I just don't recommend it. Um, but I use dual orbit. Now this is a sword gun exclusive, and what it does is you um, you launch a spinning charge at the target, shooting them as you're moving towards them, and end with a sweeping slash. So it's slower than Vorpal, however it has no charge time. And you deal damage going all the way through, and the damage is pretty comparable to Vorpal. Now it's spread out across your shots and then ending slash, as opposed to where Vorpal it's all in that one single smash of a hit but i find it to be a little bit more controlled and it just looks cooler to me and i like it so plus the no charge time is really big for me meaning i don't have to stand and charge and attack and possibly get shot um and then finally brings us down to our most important skill on sword or sword and gun is sword barrier so it's a little bit different me for me because i have sword barrier three but we'll take a look at sword barrier one take a temporary defensive stance in this stance you can deflect bullets with your sword of course Level 2 gives you a longer lasting, level 3 gives you the longest lasting one. Now, things to know about Sword Barrier is, while Sword Barrier is active, Sword Barrier cooldown does not start. It does not start until Sword Barrier ends, meaning there will always be a 15 second period that you will not have Sword Barrier up. That 15 second period can be one of the most dangerous periods for a Sword Assault of all time. Um, so that's where you have to kind of be able to deal with that 15 second downtime with either movement, um, hiding, which some people tend to do, or just damage reduction skills that you can survive and still keep fighting. The other thing to note that they don't tell you about for Sword Barrier, and this comes from a lot of trial and error, um, some information from the community that was really, really helpful, is you can only deflect bullets from one general direction at a time. Meaning if you're being shot from in front of you and behind you, you'll deflect the bullets from in front of you, but the ones behind you will actually still go through and you will still take damage. Um, it seems to be about a 180 degree angle in front of you, behind you, to your side, you know, to either side or anything like that. 
but if you're being shot from two different angles, you will take damage. Essentially, Sword Barrier gets in the animation of blocking from one direction, it doesn't block from all of them. So you do have a 360 degree circle around you that you can block from, it's just not all at the same time. Also to note, when you are blocking bullets or you're deflecting bullets, it moves you to a jogging animation, kind of like akin to not just not running, um, but not as slow as like a walking animation. Essentially, you can only, I guess for all intents and purposes, walk. It's not a really better word for it, but it's kind of like a jogging animation. Um, while you're deflecting bullets going towards a target, even if you burst into a sprint, it'll actually stop you from sprinting and move you back into that jogging animation. Um, so that's something to keep in mind is trying to, you know, close on on your target is a little difficult when you're blocking their shots so just make sure to be smart about how you use your sword barrier and make sure that you know that you're gonna be able to reach your target in time so that's really all the skills that we use um, one thing you guys probably saw in here that I didn't really talk too much about it's just because the damage skill I don't use it too often I use it when I have to use my gun is quick shot um, quick shots the reason why we take pistol in in pistol uh, in uh, in sword assault um, it's one of the two reasons, mainly just because it's a really, really strong skill. It just does a bunch of damage. It auto reloads your weapon when it happens. Um, and combined with the, with the, uh, what is it called? We're looking at, actually what we're looking at next, combined with the weapon art for pistol, quick shot is really, really strong. So usually people take quick shot like two and three and they'll forego speed form. I find the quick shot three is enough for me. Um, and I like having speed form to be able to move faster. So you don't technically have to have speed form, but it's decent enough. Now you're probably thinking, why don't we have, um, why don't we have attack form, defense form, any of those things? Um, through testing, we found that it actually doesn't stack. So you don't want to take it yourself. You just want to give it to your Arpha. So my Arpha just has those abilities. And we'll cover more of her abilities in a little bit here. Moving down, we can actually leave here. Actually, I don't think you can see them on this screen at all. Nope, they don't have a screen for it, so I'll have to talk to you with the guys about them. So moving on, we're moving to weapon arts. So here is the reason why we use pistol when it comes to uh, sword and gun, mainly because the weapon arts for sword and sword and gun are pretty bad, actually. Um, for sword, you just charge your target. Honestly, it's the, anim the animation of Vorpal Strike and let out a flurry of attacks, ending in an AOE around you, which is the animation of Horizontal Cross. So it does some damage. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's really not very good. It does look really cool though, so you've got that going for you. Um, sword and gun, and its weapon art, is more or less the same thing as sword. The only difference is you swap out the animation for Vorpal Strike with Dual Orbit, and the ending, instead of it just being an AoE around you that looks like Horizontal Cross, it actually looks like an orb around you that's actually shooting up in all directions. It's kind of cool. Again, damage is kind of meh. Um, it's not the greatest, but it's not the worst thing in the world. And again, it looks really, really cool when you do it. So now the reason why we take pistol is because of its weapon art. Pistol's weapon art. Now, I, I haven't confirmed this myself as far as the exact percentage. Um, I'm going based off some information provided by the community and my own research or my own um, own experiences. But pistol's weapon art, not only does it instantly recharge all of your skills and your gadgets, but it reduces their cooldown by 95%. Meaning that skill, like I mentioned beforehand, quick shot is spammable. I can spam it back to back to back. Um, your sword skill abilities, when it comes to sword only hunt or sword only um, assault, you can spam your sword abilities back to back to back, which is really strong for sword only assault. Um, which in my opinion puts pistol as a no brainer for an off skill for an offhand weapon it's just really 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 strong it's great for situations where you cannot use your sword where you can't reach your target and for that weapon art that weapon art alone is just really really strong so we've covered skills we've covered stats we've covered weapon arts we're gonna move into gear so gearing is hmm how can I put this gearing is kind of important but it's you have options basically when it comes to gearing so i'll show you guys my gear and i'll let you guys know kind of what um what your options are and again the gearing process or the stats on the gear um these aren't reflected or shown in game 
This is experience or information that I have gathered from again from the community. I'll put links in the description to where I'm getting some of these resources and this information. You guys are more than welcome to take it at face value. Uh, all of these guys have been doing a lot of research, putting a lot of time in, and this is what the community goes by. So I'm bringing you guys a video. Might as well go with what the community itself the community itself says. So for swords, we have a couple of options. Now, my sword of choice is Dine's Leaf. Now, Dine's Leaf does come from the end game uh, true boss ending. Or, I'm sorry, the true ending. Wow, trying to figure out a decent way to say that. It drops off the final boss of the true ending of the game, basically. Um, this weapon is a good balance between the other two I'm going to recommend for you guys. Um, it has got 7.5% crit chance. 225% crit damage. It has the highest raw damage of all of the swords, ever so slightly. Um, but it does come off of the final boss of the true ending, which takes a lot of grinding to get to. And it's not the easiest thing to farm. Um, you basically have to, uh, what most people do as far as farming it is they get the, um, the true ending final boss and they basically kill him. They check the drop. If the drop is not legendary, they'll reset. I'll either go for an epic or legendary. I went with an epic. My epic had okay stats, not the greatest, but okay. Um, I just kind of went with it. And they'll basically just alt F4 their game or they'll reset their console and just do it over and over and over and over and over again. Um, which kind of sucks for farming a weapon, not going to lie. Now, your alternatives of weapons, you can go with Masamun, which, of course, if you haven't beaten the game, Masamun is a good option. It's also something you can get very, very early. Masamun um, has a 5% crit chance does 200% crit damage and has a higher raw damage value. Um, when I say raw damage value, I mean it just has higher base damage. Now these drop off of engineer facsimiles. I believe you can also get one from a boss in the first dungeon. I don't remember if it's a Masamun that you get from him or if it is the Kotetsu. It might be the Kotetsu, um, but that's a quick weapon you can get early on in the first boss of the first dungeon is a Kotetsu. You want to get to a Masamun as soon as you can. They drop off engineer facsimiles, which you get relatively quickly in game. Um, now, of the two swords, that has a lower crit chance, but has a da higher raw damage. Um, now, the second one, let me see if I can actually pronounce this, is the ku or the Kuki Kukichi Monji. I call it the Kiku. Kiku sword. Anyway, um, the Kiku has 10% crit chance, 200% crit damage, has a lower raw attack value, um, but... Of course, like, you, like I just said, it, it's more crit chance. So it's double the crit chance of the Masamun, um, which I've mentioned beforehand, I value more crit chance versus uh, overall damage. Um, for uh, for sword builds, so it's up to you what you decide to go with, really. Um, I would say this would be my choice of the two. Uh, of course, Dane's Leaf being higher if that's included, but it's kind of a pain to get. And notice that the of the three swords, Dane's Leaf has a higher crit damage multiplier. It's a 225% versus the 200 of the other two, with still a 7.5 crit chance. So it's still like, I feel like it's an even enough balance, in my opinion, to the Kuki. Or the Kiku, excuse me. Um, so I feel like it kind of balances itself out. Um, Kiku drops, or er, it drops from quick, medium, and heavy facsimiles. So the Masamun drop from engineer facsimiles and the Kiku will drop from the quick, medium, and heavy facsimiles. So you'll come across facsimiles in all different areas, find a good spot to farm some, you'll be able to find a weapon pretty quickly. So those are the swords as far as recommendations go. The other ones are okay, but they're not really worth going over. Um, now, again, this is up to you. I personally prefer going pistol offhand because that weapon art is just too good not to have. Um, and there are too many situations where having just a sword just isn't enough um so having pistol off hands really really nice even if it's single hand pistol still pretty good now my pistols of choice my personal pistol of choice as much as i hate the way it shoots it's really just too good not to use um this one is effectively called the beetlejuice i'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced but the beetlejuice 2 plus plus um is the highest upgraded version of it it has 7.5 percent crit chance 275% crit damage. It has the highest effective range of all the pistols at 30 and can be farmed from the handgun drones, grim crystals, or armor crystals, which can be found all over the game. So there are plenty of places to find them. Um, 
you guys will be it'll, it'll be pretty easy to farm them just find a good spot where the handgun drones are and you can pretty much farm them off of those guys they're pretty easy to get um, another notable weapon you can go with is the Dovery Plus Plus. The Dovery Plus Plus has a 10% crit chance. It has 225% crit damage. It has half the range of the Beetlejuice and can be farmed from the Heartless Puppet Unique Enemy in the shop er, in the ship graveyard. Not the shop graveyard, but the ship graveyard, which is the like second zone, the desert zone. It's pretty easy to farm. Um, just run into that area. It's right where the in the middle of the map where the two ships are. Uh, he spawns you over there. You can take him down pretty quick and then get out of there as soon as you possibly can. The only problem with farming it is it's a pain to get away from the enemies to be able to re reload the zone to farm him again. So that's really just about it, unless you're going to kill everything around you, which in that zone things are spread out just far enough where they keep respawning over and over again. So it's a bit of a pain. Um, as far as the Dovery Plus Plus goes, it has very low range. But its crit chance is a bit higher. Um, its crit damage is a bit lower. But I mean, through my uses, I've never really had too much of a problem with its uh, critical damage. Plus, it just is also not an optical weapon. So the big thing about the um, the Beetlejuice is it's an optical weapon versus a uh, physical weapon. The physical weapons seem to have their bullet travel time is a bit faster than optical weapons. So sometimes it's a little bit harder to hit with the optical weapon. But the optical weapon also travels further. So take your pick. Now, of all of them, there's the third version, or the kind of the middle ground, I would call it, um, the Miasma Fang Plus. Now, it does have the highest crit chance at a 12.5% crit chance. Um, however, its crit damage is where it's middle, and it's a 250% crit damage. Now, its range is slightly higher than the Dovery Plus Plus, um, but it does have that lower crit chance, or sorry, crit damage than the, Beetle, um, than the Beetlejuice, though it has higher crit chance, so I mean, Really kind of take your pick here. It also looks pretty cool. It's also a physical damage weapon, so the bullet time is pretty fast on it. And the drop itself comes from the GM final boss normal ending or the first phase boss of the true ending. Because the true ending, technically you fight the final boss a second time, a different form. Um, I won't give too many spoilers other than that, but it's basically, it's it'll drop from the first version of that boss in the true ending or just the regular final boss in the normal ending. So you can farm it pretty easily. Um, same way you would normally do it is just check for the drop if it's what you want cool keep it if not then reset the game um, Just a quick note in accessories accessories are kind of personal preference based, but what I usually recommend for accessories are Like this beret. It's an X amount of HP over a minute. That's your most important um, Stat in my opinion is close you get to 100 because it's just base HP regen, which is really really nice um, you want that over the ability where when you have over a certain amount of HP, you won't get one shot by an attack. I believe I have something. Yeah, okay. Avoid instant death when HP is over a certain value. You want that as close to 10% as you possibly can. Um, meaning that when your HP is over 10%, whatever hit you that normally would kill you, it doesn't kill you. So it leaves you at one HP, which is kind of nice. Um, you want that over um, max HP. So if you can get those three all together in one it'd be awesome notice i don't have that i just have the one that gives me hp regen i found that's been enough for me so you don't really have to get it it's not that important but it is very helpful um, especially if your arphasis can't get to you to heal you i found that with my damage reduction abilities i can stay in the fight and not have to worry too much about my hp unless i'm just getting absolutely blown away um also an accessory that has either strength dex or luck on it would also not be a bad idea um Dex, of course, give you more crit damage. Luck give you more crit chance, and strength give you more damage overall. So, take your pick. As long as you have one of those, like I mentioned, I have a accessory with 17 strength, mainly because it's glasses, and I like glasses on my character. So, it just worked out that way. Um, so, also, let's go ahead and head over now. We've covered all of the gear options, kind of what you guys want to choose from. Let's take a look at the gadgets. So, gadgets are pretty straightforward. Um, the absolute one you want non-negotiable melee booster melee booster increases your melee damage a lot i actually don't have a percentage base on it but it's 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 been a hefty amount i've gone from dealing 1k to 1.5 so it's it's a pretty good amount which is of course like a 50 percent or is a 50 percent bonus but you know take it as you will it's been quite a bit of a change so melee booster is a no-brainer you want it melee booster kit's awesome um meta material camouflage that's this is kind of where you get to kind of pick around if you want certain things you don't want others um become transparent for a set amount of time attack and cancel the effect useful okay helps you get into like interesting positions before a fight starts um or maybe res your uh, as a teammate i have this on arphasis and she uses it to res me a lot which is actually pretty cool 
Um, flashbang generates a large flash and sound. Um, usually knocks enemies down. Helpful. Not necessary, but helpful. Um, and first aid kit just gives you HP regen. Um, it stacks with your other HP regen, so it gives you a lot of HP regen, which is pretty nice. Um, I use it just because it's an extra slot in case I'm in a situation where I just need extra HP regen. I'm in a bad place, so it's helpful. So those are all the gadgets, really. Um, now, we're going to make a quick note about playstyle, because there's a couple things to note when it comes to sword and why I choose the, uh, the sword gun over just using sword by itself. So the sword only playstyle is based on a 1-2-3 hit combo meaning you attack three times. On the third normal, there is a bit of a delay, or as you call it, like a hit stop, until you can start your combo again. So when I say one, two, three, it's basically either one, two, three normal attacks, or you can use a sword skill into two normal attacks. Um, note, you can't use two normal attacks into a sword skill. It doesn't actually work that way. It only starts with two sword or one sword skill into two normals, and that's it. There's a delay time before you'd be able to use, like, even try using two normals and then a skill. It always has to be the first ability. So, just a note, that's how it ends up working out. Um, you can also charge the third attack of your normal. So, technically, you could sword skill, normal attack, and then charge attack. The charge attacks do deal more damage, but you want to keep in mind that too much charging is going to cause, you know, DPS loss, mainly since I value number of hits versus how hard the hits are, um, just for more chances to crit. I don't find charging really being that useful for me. Um, also to note, you can dash cancel the end of the third hit. So after you swing three times, so say normal one, two, three, after your third normal, you can press your dash button. For me on the keyboard, it's F. Um, you can press it either back, left, or right to cancel into being able to attack again. If you attack again, your character takes a slight step forward into his next one, two, three hit combo, or you can just press a sword skill and move in towards that attack as well. So in most situations for sword, your basic play style is one, two, three, F dash or dash cancel into one, two, three, or sword skill, two, three, dash cancel, sword skill, two, three, or you know, some combination of that setup. But mostly you wanna make sure you have that downtime filled them with something. Dash canceling is usually what it is for helpful in repositioning, and you get to normal attack right afterwards, so it's pretty useful. Also to note, it's easy to dash twice. You wanna try to mainly just dashing once into an attack, because the first attack out of your dash has you lunge forward slightly, meaning you'll, you'll connect with your target. Even if you dash backwards, if you were to attack after that, you will actually lunge forward to attack, and dashing a second time would actually uh, just have more downtime, so it's a loss of DPS overall. So that's sword only. Um, when you're looking at sword gun, now this is my reason for sword gun is for its combo from the very get go. Um, first to note, as far as controls go, sword gun changes your melee button from uh, your regular melee attack to the reload button. So whatever your reload button is, if you're playing controller on console or anything along those lines, um, that reload button now becomes your melee attack. Um, to reload the gun on sword gun, you have to aim down your sights and then press the reload button. Um, note that if you are using sword barrier on sword gun, you lose the ability to shoot your gun while sword barrier is up. It does not have a third normal attack, or sorry, it does not have a charge on its third normal attack. However, what it does have is little to no delay in its standard three hit combo. So it's three hit combo, you can almost spam it, um, which is what I enjoy about it. And what's really, really nice is I, I didn't mention it earlier, I kind of forgot to, is swords one, two, three hit combo, like sword only has you mostly stationary moving forward where sword gun you have a little bit of leeway of being able to turn your character slightly so you have a bit more control and you can continue to attack so i find that i get more attacks off using sword gun than i would just using sword now i have noticed a slight damage loss on sword gun i don't sure what the exact value is i'm sure someone's gonna say so in the comments um but i have noticed that there is a slight damage loss overall um, however, it has not been enough for me to want to go back to sword only. It's actually, I've seen a DPS overall increase with sword gun personally. Now, that's up to you as a player. If you want to use sword, if you want to use sword gun. I use sword gun and don't even use the gun. Um, I very rarely actually use the gun portion of my sword gun combo. It's just because I want to be able to attack consistently um, without having, or with having complete control over my character. That and I like dual orbit over uh, Vorpal Strike, so it works best for me. However, I've got friends that play sword only. I've got a buddy that plays sword only, and he is really, really good at it and has no problems whatsoever. So, hey, you definitely can do it. Now, the last thing to note 
on playstyle is you can technically take, and I'll show you guys really quick. You can take sword and sword gun, and you technically will have two different palettes. Now, the reason I don't do this is because losing out on pistol weapon art and just generally having the option of having a ranged weapon in a situation where you can't reach with your sword is too good for me to really want to have that many sword skills. Um, it really just isn't worth it to me, especially if you're playing sword only, where your biggest damage is sword skill into two normals into sword skill into two normals. Um, having the pistol weapon art up, allowing you to continuously chain your sword skills into normals and sword skills into normals is a lot of damage. It's a ton of damage that comes from just having the weapon art from the pistol alone. So even if you don't use the pistols for damage, having the weapon art alone is just really, really strong. So I personally don't go that route. You absolutely can. Um, just to keep in mind, you cannot have two of the same weapon in, or I'm sorry, you can't have one weapon in two slots. So I couldn't put two day sleeves here. Actually, wait, can I? Oh no, it moves it. Okay. That's what I thought. So you can't put two Dane's leaves in one slot. You have to have two different swords. So yeah, see it, it keeps taking off. My, it keeps moving my weapon back and forth. You have to have two swords for two slots. So you can't, if I had two Dane's leaves, for example, I could put a Dane's leaf in each slot, have one of them be sword gun and one of them be sword only, but I can't take my one Dane, Dane's leaf and put it into two different slots. You just can't do that. So that's kind of what you're looking at there. I forgot to turn off my Steam notifications. Whoops. Whatever. No big deal. And we'll continue from there. So last but not least, um, so I didn't want to really go too far into this specifically, mainly because this video is already going to be long. It's like 40 minutes as it is. Um, I just want to note on Arphasis. So Arpha, the way I kind of build her up, or him, if you play a female character, or if you have a male character, or a male Arpha, it doesn't matter who. Um, the way I build Arphasis up is mainly for survivability, enough stats, enough attack stats to be able to dual wield her weapons. So I'll show you guys her stats right now real quick, what I have on her. Um, so enough stats to be able to wield her weapons right now. Oh, for some reason she doesn't have her, does she have her weapon dual wielded? She does, okay. Um, right now I have her built with the, um, the Beetlejuice and the AMR Deathwind. Now she has enough strength to be able to wield the AMR Deathwind and enough decks to be able to dual wield her um, dual battle juice or um, beetle juice. Mainly, you want to push into int. Int is going to be really helpful with being able to spam out healing abilities or buff abilities, or in some cases, debuffs. I have her with a couple debuffs too. Um, but those really aren't too important. Your main thing you want to keep focus on is your heals and the uh, the damage buffs you can get you can get from her. The major damage buffs you really want are crit form and nano boost shot. Or crit form shot and nano boost shot those are two really really good buffs you want as much as possible the attack and defense form fields are really really nice to have as well um because you can't stack them of course having the fields like i mentioned before or the uh the forms on your character was pointless so just give them an arphasis have her buff you up there are other characters in the game that will also buff you up i know if i take elizabeth with me a lot she has the attack form uh the attack form field which is really really nice and you'll have that with you as well um as far as stats go, I just kind of went 100, 100, and 122 into it, just for defensive purposes. And then, of course, and so she can spam. Now, one thing to note, and this is I found after tons of testing, and this is my theory. I can't, of course, without being able to see an actual value, I can't guarantee that this is the case. Um, but AED shot. A quick note on AED shot. There's only a level 1 AED shot. Um, what it does is you load it into your gun you can shoot someone if they're dead and it reses them back up now you would think that'd be great to have in your arphasis what i have found is when arphasis has aed shot if it is off cooldown it's great because she uses it immediately she can shoot you from across the map if you have her with a sniper rifle it's awesome and it gets you up really really fast the problem with aed shot is when it's on cooldown when arphasis has aed shot on cooldown and you go down I have had multiple situations Arphasis stand around, do nothing, and wait for AED shot to come off cooldown. I only assume that she's waiting for AED shot to come off cooldown because she just stands there doing nothing and all of a sudden loads AED shot and shoots me. Um, I've also noticed that when she's doing that, if she's procced up waiting for AED shot to come off cooldown, the other AI will not res you. 
they'll they'll keep doing whatever it is they're doing. They won't actually come and res you. Now, I have since taken AD shot off Arphasis. She's got enough defensive stats to survive, and she comes and reses me instantly every single time. In most cases, I actually have her set up with the um with the metamaterial camouflage, and she'll sometimes wait a little bit, and then metamaterial camouflage, and then come res me. Which, because she has such high int, giving her back all of her abilities faster, metamaterial camouflage is off cooldown quite a bit. So that's just my note, really quick on Arphasis. Um, take it however you will. Hopefully that's something that you decide on if that's something you want to use. But I've had really, really bad experience with AED shot, so I don't run it on Arphasis at all. Um, but yeah, that's really, that's going to cover about everything here, guys. Make sure, yep, yeah, that covers everything. Hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. I know this has been a super, super long video, so I'm so sorry. Um, for any of you guys who did stick around through the entire thing, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. If you have any helpful notes, by all means, toss them in the comments. The whole point of these videos is to spread knowledge. So if anything I didn't mention or something that has worked really well for you, um, maybe that comment will help someone else out as well. I feel like this is a really good time to get this video out because we will be getting new content with a DLC patch we're supposed to be getting next month. Um, so any of you guys that are looking to run Sword Assault, hopefully this helped you out. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I will catch you guys in the next one.